Welcome to the Holly Hibbard Leadership Podcast, your go-to source for actionable insights, practical advice, and inspiring stories to help you lead with faith-filled purpose at work and at home. If you're looking to equip, empower, and encourage yourself to thrive in an ever-changing world, you're in the right place. I'm Holly Hibbard, and with over 20 years of experience as a science teacher, leadership coach, entrepreneur, and relationship mentor, I understand the challenges and growth opportunities that come with pursuing your passion. Whether you're chasing career goals, taking entrepreneurial leaps, or finally reaching for those long postponed ambitions, I'm here to help. So let's get comfortable having uncomfortable conversations and explore ways you can lead your family, lead your life, and find your calling with intention and faith. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the show. This topic today hit me while I was riding in the car with my family, and I could not wait to record this for you because every now and then I get a pretty darn good idea for something to share with you. And lucky for you, without writing it down, I actually did remember this time what the topic is. I'm going to dive into today why you need to stop inspiring others. I'll start this with a story time, a couple of stories actually, now that I think about this. I remember years ago, when I was first being coached by my very first professional coach. He was specializing in having me set forth a vision of what I wanted for my coaching practice, what kind of coach I wanted to be. And he asked me a question in regards to that. And I replied, this is like 2012 or so. I replied by telling him, well, I... I'd like to be my own version of Oprah. And this guy says something along the lines of, why the F does everyone want to be like effing Oprah? And I was like, geez, dude, what is wrong? And it really threw me off guard because to me, I was thinking about the people who inspired me. And I couldn't see his point in the moment because the way that he delivered it was so jarring. And so my initial thought was, why wouldn't I want to be someone that inspires other people? So that's one part of today's share. The second story to lay some groundwork here for you is way back when I was in the fittest part of my life, to date at least, that's a story for another day, I would go to so many bodybuilding and physique competition shows. And I mean, so many, (laughs) because for those of you that don't know, uh, when I was a teacher, I was a uh, weightlifting coach and I'm certified as a personal trainer. And I loved that stuff. And my ex at the time, my ex-husband also, we knew a lot of people in that circuit. So anyway, that's why we were there supporting other people who were up on the stage. And I remember seeing these different bodies up there and thinking, wow, they really worked hard. And over and over again, the bio of each person is read, of each competitor by the MC. And Most of the people had something in their bio along the lines of, I'm doing this because I want to inspire others to fill in the blank, or I want to be an inspiration. And I remember my ex turning to me and saying to me, by the way, because I had at the time lost about 110 pounds and probably was in year two of 10 of keeping it off. And... He says to me, people who are actually inspiring don't have an aim to be inspiring. He said, now you are inspiring. He goes, that, because that's not your aim. Because you're simply out here doing the goal that you set out to do. And the outcome is the outcome. Are people inspired by results? Yes. But no, that would not have been a line in my bio if I was a competitor on that stage. That's not my intention. My purpose isn't 
to inspire others. And the reason today this thought came to me and these two stories I just shared collide is because I was thinking about as a coach, specifically now as a leadership and executive coach, a social emotional learning specialist, My question to myself while I was sitting in the car riding along was, what is it that I wish to do for people as a coach? Yes, I know as an educator, I can educate folks on leadership principles, executive function, social, emotional, everything, emotional intelligence. Yes, I do all that. I love that. But the intention behind it I don't think of the word inspire. Rather, what I came up with is I want to uplift others. And the reason I titled today's episode, Why You Need to Stop Inspiring Others, one has to do with those stories I just shared with you. I always reflect on that comment of people who actually inspire people don't walk around saying, I'm here to be an inspiration. But two, to uplift someone, that gets me involved with the other people. That gets me in the trenches, next to people, hugging people, shaking hands, listening, having conversations. I think of being inspiring from a standpoint of I'm going to be over here doing my thing and you're going to be over there doing the thing that you're doing and you're going to witness me from afar and aspire to be just like me or in some way embody what I embody or take the actions that I take. And frankly, the world has enough of me. It's me. The world doesn't necessarily have enough of you yet. And when we work to inspire other people, it gives us the effect of distancing, just like social media. I can scroll through social and look at different aesthetics, people, goals, courses, home decor, family life. I can, of course, use those things as an inspiration to create a vision of my own. But very likely, I'm not going to have a relationship with the people who created those things. There is distance in being inspirational. If you are aiming, however, to uplift others instead, it is so much easier and fulfilling. Uplifting others is easier than inspiring others even though it might not seem like it because inspiring, you have this diff- this distance between you. But when you are uplifting others, you get to be you. Whereas when you are looking to inspire other people, I get this image of you chasing the carrot. You're running after this perceived notion, this imagined result, whether it's physical or career or family or financial or spiritual or any of it, you're running after this imagined thing. And what you've imagined is nothing that you've ever, like I said, actually shook hands with. However, if you are seeking to uplift others, now you're with the people. And it is easier because You get to be focused on what they want to do, what they want to create, what helps them experience joy, gratitude, pleasure, elation, connection, authenticity. You get to be with them in the process. And the only thing being asked of you is not for you to reach this imaginary aesthetic that you've created this perfect scenario, but it's asking of you to bring all of you to the table, to bring your warmth, to bring your empathy, to bring your willingness, to bring your humility. That's just 
simpler. It's simpler. And then we can spend less time questioning, am I inspiring yet? Have I reached that pinnacle yet? And spend more of our time fulfilling our ability to be generous with others, fulfilling others because we are aiming now to uplift them. Uplift. So it's not you doing all of the heavy lifting for them. I love the word encourage or empower because those words insinuate that you are taking your own courage and loaning it to someone when you empower them. You are taking your, or when you encourage them rather, you are taking your own power and steadiness and loaning it to someone else when you are empowering them. I hope I got that right. I think I got it mixed up, but you get the point, right? Your gifts and talents are a, are just that. They're a gift on loan to others when they are having a moment where they feel that they're falling short in one little area and you come in and you have an aim to uplift them. And the best question you can ask them is, what do you need right now? And the way you ask it is important because so many people out of pride or the way they were raised or the discomfort of hearing that question will shoo you for a moment and go, oh, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need anything. But if you truly press it and listen and ask them and encourage them to say, hey, take a moment and actually consider what do you need right now? Give them a moment to think about it. And they will likely give you an answer, if not immediately, in the relatively near future, a couple minutes maybe or less. They might need someone to hear them out. They might need an accountability partner. They might need somebody to suggest some ideas or a reference to something or someone or a referral to something or someone or advice on something or a helping hand with something they're trying to get done or something they're trying to delegate and get off their plate temporarily. But those are all ways that you can uplift others. Hand in hand, together as a community, when we stop aiming to inspire because I'm great over here and you can just chase this image that I've created even though God created us all unique. <laughs> like, Find your uniqueness. Ask the question of others, what do you need? Be there for them in those ways and uplift them. That will therefore help them to become a better version of themselves. And again, it's easier because you just got to be you because you already have everything that it takes in you to be that kind of person for someone else. So I hope this gave you something to think about of why you need to stop inspiring others. (laughs) Just worry about or not even worry, be more concerned with how can I uplift the people around me? People you know well, people you've just met, total strangers, uplift instead of inspiring. I would love to know what you have to say on this topic. Do you still, for whatever reason, feel like inspiring is easier for you? Or uplifting seems like a daunting task? Does one seem like it's more work than the other? I love hearing your opinions. Leave a comment or drop me a text through the podcast. The link is in the show notes to do that. And until next time, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. I'm high-fiving you right now because I'm so proud of you for putting your personal growth first. Remember, I believe in you. And with faith-filled intention and committed actions, you can lead your life purpose and family to wherever you dream possible. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean so much to me if you'd take 30 seconds to help others discover the show. Leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, share the show with your friends and family, or screenshot this episode to your Instagram stories and tag me at the Holly Hibbard. Remember, you're not alone in this journey. I'm always here cheering you on. And until next time, stay curious, remain encouraged, 
and keep empowering yourself. You're doing better than you think, I promise.